Hey guys, welcome to another episode. So um, today it's a bit of a longer video, but uh, stick with me, it's totally worth it. So today we're looking at uh, how to take a trial balance uh, at a mapping and prepare uh, your financial statements, uh, just the income statement and the balance sheet. We're gonna look at a really like a simplified uh, example, but it, it's actually uh, a real company that I do a monthly reporting for and they use the exact same approach to get paid to do that. So, uh, yep, just wanted to share that with you. Let's go ahead and let's get started. Okay, so what we have here is our income statement template and our balance sheet template. And those are just like really simple templates that we're gonna attempt to create straight out of the trial balance for the year. What we need to do in order to achieve this is to add some mapping. Just so we're gonna have the FS. This is gonna show if it goes to the balance sheet or to the income statement. We're gonna have the type and we're gonna have our class. And our class are gonna be the accounts that we have here. And then we're gonna link those with some formulas. Always like to cover those a bit different so they're easily recognizable. And uh, since if we look here, we see that the trial balance is not closed. This means that we can just use the net turnover uh, for our income statement. I'm gonna add a new column here, format it the same way and call it net turnover. And it's gonna be the debit minus the credit copy that down with control d and the other column that i'm gonna need is gonna be my net closing balance which i can use for the balance sheet the debit minus the credit now what we have to do is uh, we have to start like filling our uh, mapping for those we know that share capital goes in the balance sheet so that's uncovered loss retained earnings current year leases so pretty much everything up to group 60 of our accounts when our expenses start it's in our balance sheet and then we have income statement and the income statement goes all the way to the assets under construction which is a balance sheet item and the other balance sheet item is our prepaid expenses and we can see that we have balances on those copy the income statement designation the next thing we need to do is add our type so this is equity up to here and uh, from here probably the easiest way is to see if it's a debit or a credit if we're not sure or if we know exactly. So leases are gonna be a liabilities. Then we have some assets. And uh, those are all assets, assets, and even the depreciation, although it's uh, a credit, you know that it has to be deducted from the book value of the assets. So all the way up to here, our suppliers are liabilities foreign supplier, supplier advances are an asset, clients are also an asset, export clients, payroll is something we have to pay to our uh, employees, unused paid leave as well, other employee related balances, uh, other employee related as well, it's gonna be an asset, maybe we gave some advances or something like that. Uh, our income tax balance can be both an asset and a liability if we overpaid in advance, but here it's a liability. The personal income tax also. VAT on purchases is something that we get to recover. VAT on sales is a liability. VAT for reimbursement is an asset. Uh, their balance is asset. Social security is health insurance. The guarantees uh, are also an asset. The guarantees we have given to other companies. Shareholder balances, we owe something to our shareholders, to our uh, insurance company, perhaps we have some deferred tax assets, other debtors, other creditors, cash is an asset. Uh, also assets under construction are an asset and prepaid expenses as well. Uh, here we have expenses and uh, those are all expenses all the way to here. This one as well, this one as well, and other finance costs. 
and uh, we also have some services revenue this is gonna be our revenue pp sales revenue as well uh, other income yep other income as well and uh, other income from uh, exchange rates FX and other finance income what I'm not seeing here is that our uh, PP sale the sale was for less than the book value so we're pretty much getting a loss on it but uh, we're still gonna leave it as a revenue because we're gonna put it in other income with a negative sign and uh, our class so this is our share capital this uh, are our retained earnings then these we're gonna designate as leases have property plant and equipment which is all the way to here our right of usage is intangibles and also its uh, depreciation is gonna be an intangible the other depreciation is in PPE and uh, the other thing that's gonna go in PPE is our assets under construction then we go to inventory which is inventory I can see that it is zero so that wouldn't matter but uh, still uh, domestic suppliers are trade payables which also goes for foreign suppliers for other receivables advances from suppliers we have uh, trade receivables this one as well we have some other payables and uh, those are pretty much gonna get all the attention for so those intercompany actually gonna call them just related parties because I don't know if uh, maybe at some point it might become an asset and it's a good idea to keep the mapping pretty much the same year over year so our insurance is also in other payables and uh, other creditors as well Okay, let's go up here. Uh, other employee related, we have some other receivables here. VAT on purchases as well. Guarantees as well. Uh, deferred tax assets is just deferred tax assets. Um, this is other receivables. Assets cash on bank, this is simply cash and then we go to expenses so we have our material expenses um, then we have our hired services depreciation and amortization i'm gonna put those together then we have payroll expenses i'm gonna include those and those and uh, then some other expenses finance costs and this is also finance costs our prepaid expenses are gonna be other receivables and uh, it's gonna be sales revenue gonna be other income and this is also gonna be other income and this is gonna be finance income and this one as well and what you we can see here is that actually our other income will come at a negative so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna move this to other expenses as it's pretty much a loss recognized on PP and we're gonna separate it in the cash flow statement anyway. Okay, that's, that's pretty much it. We have our net turnover, we had our net closing balance and the only thing that's left to do is to link those in the income statement and the balance sheet. And uh, let's start with the income statement. So the way we can do that is we can use some ifs and uh, go to our mapping, select our net turnover. Then our criteria range one is gonna be our F column, the class of the account, and our criteria is gonna be our account. Let's format that and uh, we can see that it's negative and that's because revenue is on the credit. So I'm gonna flip that and then we're gonna just go ahead and paste it everywhere. If we used the proper uh, names, 
should just everything should link up just perfectly i can see that finance costs has some issues so let's go to our mapping and uh yeah what we wrote here is finance cost okay and now our income statement is fine and um the 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 best part about this is that next year we can just use our account numbers to vlookup up our uh, mapping and just look at uh, some new accounts or if we know about some changes and our income statement is going to be ready. Okay, now let's link our balance and you can see here that I have a column for adjustments and adjust it and you're going to see in a second why that's so. Doing the same thing, some ifs. Our sum range is going to be our net closing balance. Our criteria is going to be our class and our our criteria range is going to be our class and our criteria is going to be here, PPE. Okay, let's drop that down, stretch that a bit, just copy that over here. Okay, we named this cash. We know that inventory was zero. I think this is fine and then we can go ahead and copy it here here and um, you know that we need to flip those because we present them as positive signs although they're negative because there are credits in our uh, trial balance our leases trade payables other payables related parties and we have 766,000 difference and you can see here that we have 774,000 result. We have to link our result because our uh, trial balance is not closed. I'm gonna leave that the before tax result. And we are left with 8,000 difference. So maybe what we did is uh, we skipped some account and maybe used something in our mapping. So the easiest way to do that is we're just going to select our whole table, create a pivot table and just use those, the, the FS, the type and the class. Just use our net turnover and net closing balance. Just by going here, I can already see that what was my different 8000. You see that here I have 8000 other income. And yeah, I switched everything to other expenses and I, I didn't include my other income. So what I can do is just add a few lines here, other income. And if I just copy my formula, everything should be fine. If I go to my balance sheet now, I can see that my assets equal my equity and uh, liabilities which means that my balance sheet is uh, is reconciling properly. And uh, that was it, just a simple and fast way to go from a, a trial balance, add some mapping and create a fast income statement and balance sheet that's properly linked to the trial balance and you can update it anytime you want. Okay guys, that was it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I found it useful. This is the way I've been making financial statements for the past like 10 years and uh, you can use it for like monthly reporting, for annual financial statements, for, uh, for any kind of aggregation of data. Just add your mapping and then prepare your template that uses the mapping to sum all the values. The best thing is that uh, every next period if there are no like huge changes in your input data, in your trial balance, you can just use the same mapping, apply it and go to uh, your finished statements. So uh, give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and maybe even punch that bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Till then, thanks for watching and see you next time.